put this plane to the test. Let's do a vertical. Hey guys, welcome back to John Carter C. If you're new to our channel, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And you can also check out our Instagram at JohnsRCX. So today I have a pretty cool plane to show you guys. This is the Great Plains Electrify E-Performance Series SU-31. We got this as an ARF kit from our local hobby shop. And it's now a discontinued model. It was back in production in 2011. And yeah, it's a pretty rare model now. So I'm pretty lucky that I found it. So as you can see, it's a fairly small plane. It's actually the smallest ARF that we've built. It has a 41 inch wingspan and a 38 in inch length. For the servos, we're using four sub micro servos. I'm gonna flip it around for you guys. We're using four E Flight DS76 servos. These are actually not the ones that the manual recommended for us. The ones that the manual recommended were Futaba S3114 servos. And we didn't have those, but we had a bunch of E Flight ones lying around, and it seemed to fit the slot uh, pretty nicely. So we just decided to go with the E Flight ones. You can also see that uh, from our first flight, these are different servo rods than the ones that we used. Um, the ones that came in the original package were these. These are the Futaba servo rods, and we did have some issues with these. Um, once I landed for our first flight, I noticed that no matter how much we tied the screw on these servo rods, the servo clevis would still move around and it would mess up the control surfaces. So what we did is we made our own with uh, metal rods and Z-bend pliers. And we also use a quick link connector to uh, safely secure the servo rod into place. If you look in the back here, um, where the plane actually does not have a tail wheel, it's using a landing skid. And uh, you can see from our flights one and two, uh, we didn't have to move the plane to the runway ourselves, and we couldn't taxi it. This is the inside of the plane. This is where the battery goes. For our first flight, we use an Admiral 3S2200 mAh battery pack. You can see right here. And uh, we also use a ZTW Mantis 35 amp ESC. Now, the reason I'm showing you the ESC is because we actually did have to change this ESC out. Uh, once I landed, I noticed that I did have some issues with the low end of the throttle. Uh, for some reason, on the low end of the throttle, using the Mantis ESC, uh, it would have little to no power, and we did try programming the high end and the low end of the throttle spectrum, and we still had issues. So we just changed this ESC out for an E-Flight 40 amp speed controller, and it seems to be doing the job fine. Uh, for our second flight, you can see that we're, we use a 3S 11.1 mAh battery pack, that's from E-Flight. And it seemed to balance out a lot better on the 1800. Um, for the receiver, uh, it's a Spectrum AR4104 channel receiver, and this receiver does not support AS3X or SAFE or any of that gyro, uh, gyroscope things, so it basically it's just the pilot and the plane. Uh, so yeah, it's a 3S 11.1 volt uh, battery that's powering a 40 amp ESC and you can kind of see in the front here, the motor that we're using is a Rimfire 10 motor and that motor is turning a 10 by 7 E prop. Alright, so now let me talk to you about my personal flight experience with the plane. So for our first flight on the 2200 mAh battery pack, I noticed that when I took off it was pretty nose heavy so I did have to trim that out. And I also noticed that doing verticals and hovering were kind of hard because I found that the Rimfire 10 motor, I guess it just didn't have enough power to sustain a vertical or anything like that. For rolls, it did it fine. And for loops, it was a bit difficult for our first flight because I noticed that the elevators were really touchy. So I did have to put 50% rates on the elevator and 15% expo. For our second flight, it flew a lot better on the 1800 mAh battery pack. Uh, I reset all the elevator trims and it seemed to balance out a lot better. So you can see that uh, with the aileron trim and the rudder trim and all of that stuff, I was a lot more comfortable with the plane and I was able to do a lot more with it.
And one more thing before the video ends, uh, if you might have noticed on our second flight, the audio was not as clear. And that's because uh, we did have some microphone issues uh, where the microphone would not pick up anything. So we did have to transcribe what I said uh, on the video. So uh, because it was kind of hard to hear what I said. So that's pretty much it. So thanks for tuning to John's RC and for to our channel. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Yeah, so this plane has a little skid uh, for its tail wheel. So um, we have to just like move it out there. Taking off. Put this plane to the test. It does do a vertical. And just so you guys know, I did have to put um, some expo. I think I put like 20 to 30 percent expo, and I lowered the rates to like 70 percent because, um, by the looks of it, when I um, when I moved the aileron to the max, it looked like it would do like an infinite roll. So I did have to lower that down because I'm not used to like a really high um, rate. All right, let's try upside down. Inverted. It does do it really well. It's very stable. Okay, wow, that that's just like the leader 480. It flies uh, inverted just like it was right side up. Um, it might be a bit hard to do a hover with this motor because um, it takes like at least like a split second for it to get uh, like spun up. So I have to start the hover with a little bit of throttle. That might be a bit difficult for hovers. Still trying to get used to this plane. Knife edge. Alright, it does knife edge as well. For this plane, I always have to keep a little bit of uh, throttle. Okay, yeah, hovering on this is uh, a challenge. Let me do another low pass. More, it was quicker than I expected. This is on a wind fire 10, right? Yeah. Very, very small motor for what it's doing right now. It's very lightweight, so This is a great aerobatic plane though. Snap roll. Yeah, okay. Landing. Because
because of the skid, this might be a bit hard to land, but... I think I might be okay with the right amount of speed. Nice. It's a small bounce, but... Clear the timer too. Uh, it's kind of annoying to taxi. I like that it's hard, but it's just like loud. All right, so that was my maiden flight on the Electroflight SU31. From what I've seen when I took off, it was a bit nose heavy, and I did have to trim that out um, to minus 42. But uh, it seems like a lot, but I did get it trimmed out anyway. Um, let's, let's try it on uh, let me try pulling the battery a little bit back more and see if that'll help you. Okay. Okay. But yeah, you flew it very well. I'm glad that uh, nothing came off, no wheels came off. <laughs> so, excellent flight, John. Very good flight. Alright, guys, I have the SU 31 again for a second flight, and this time we're on a 3 S1800 with the And we also changed some things on the servo rod. As you can see, it's different from the one that we used for first time. Uh, we actually made our own because the one that they gave us, no matter how much we tied the screw on them, uh, it would still move around, so that would cause like imbalance on the servos. So this time we, we just made our own with the Z-Band pliers and the little connectors, so yeah. Seems a lot more balanced on the 18th century. Can't do like an unlimited vertical bus. How much time do I have? A minute and 50. I can 
do some more passes to the back of the lane. I think I'm gonna have to put more um, expo and words for the elevator because it's still a bit touchy. Landing. I'm gonna be landing left to right. That was kind of easier to land left to right on the left. Maybe because I have like, a longer approach. Okay, uh, between this bag is gonna be a pain. I'm just gonna go run for that.